Good afternoon and welcome to baseball as the Canton uh, Little Giants today as uh, they will take on uh, Pekin and the uh, Mid-Atlantic Conference baseball action here on WBY streamed online 1560 WBYS.com. Good to have you along today as we are into our broadcast here on this a beautiful looking Tuesday. Finally after a little scare in the weather yesterday and again a lot of the uh, things uh, with the weather again yesterday with the hail that occurred here about three o'clock yesterday and uh, postponed it. They'll make it up today. Beautiful gorgeous day and welcome inside our pregame show. It's brought to you by Monocle's Pizza, home of the family pleaser, dine-in, carry-out or delivery at 647-1127. Uh, today Bob Wagner is back. Good to have him back here after Again, after our basketball stint there, we had to give him a little bit of a break, so he's ready to go. And we have MBIX for video production and Megan back the studios. 56 degrees, ideal weather conditions here, Bobby. We're ready for some baseball. Good matchup here against uh, Pekin here. Uh, again, the Little Giants 0-2 in the conference, Pekin at 0-1. So a good opportunity to get off to a good start this week. Yeah, it's definitely uh, one of those icebreaker games where you want to get that first conference win. I think it's going to be an evenly matched game. It's really going to come down to pitching like it always does. You know, it's it's really going to boil down to who can keep it, you know, in the strike zone, who can make it tough for the hitters to, you know, to get on base. And, you know, all in all, if you can play an overall game, you're going to come out on top. Yeah, because you never know. You've seen already a couple of uh, of the games so far. We've seen Metamora split in their game so far in the season, and uh, Limestone is 2-0. and You take a little bit about... Uh, some of the actual schedule and some of the things here with the uh, standings in the Midline Eye Conference. And again, Limestone, Washington at 2-0. Dunlap slips in there at 2-0. They were able to get a game in yesterday. I don't know how they were able to do it, but they beat East Peoria yesterday by a score of 11-2. And it's Metamora, Morton at 1-1, one one, Canton 0-2. East Peoria 0-3, Pekin 0-1. Mike Walter is the head coach here, and he's joined by the uh, also assistant coach Mike Emery, and they will bring out the lineups to the home plate area. We'll give our starting lineups and the call of this game for you as the Little Giants in town here all this afternoon as they take on Pekin 56 degrees. Back after this one-minute break. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton, Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spooner Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton, by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Call us for more information about underwriting. Game for you, Bob Wagner, Leon Griver, and of course we're streamed online, 1560wbys.com. You look at this uh, little giant lineup, and again, some familiar faces, Bobby, what we saw last year. I think when you look at uh, with the pitching today of Lucas Ketchum, uh, this is probably their best defensive team I think I've seen in a couple of years. You have Drake Strode manning center field. you got more experience now with Dalton Kremley. you got Clint Wells, who may be one of the better players in the conference, hitting-wise, defensively. And uh, at the corners, you got Jay Sanderson who's doing a, a you know, phenomenal job there. Landon Cummins in right field. So a lot of good experience returns for this little giant uh, baseball team here, Bobby. And you know as well as I do, experience pays off in dividends. And that mm -hmm. dividends means wins. And, you know, you look at right now at the six and four record you know they played pretty well they've been a little streaky from time to time but that's going to happen because one you never know what kind of weather and element you're going to play in and two to me until you get the game to number like 12 to 15 you really get in your comfort zone as far as a baseball team yeah i, I hear a lot of people you know bashing the cardinals two and five and i hear the the word that you say Take a sample. You know, it's just a sample of what we have for the yeah. rest of the season. It's very similar to what you're talking about. You know, we're taking a look. They won three in a row, had a nice couple of games they played, got some pitching in. Avery Dean had an outstanding weekend there. Uh, you, you look at Drake Strude, as we mentioned, one of the top hitters in the conference. Uh, he's starting to hit the ball like he with authority. Uh, he struggled a little bit last year at times. But, uh, you know, when you have that core of, uh, again, Drake Strode, Dalton Crumley, right up the middle. I've always believed if you're strong up the middle, all the other stuff will kind of fall in place, and a lot of championships yep. are won and lost that way. Well, I totally agree. It starts with the catcher and works its way to center field. And, yeah. You know, you look at any teams at any level that garnered success from start to finish, those positions are pretty sound. I think the core we've got right now is just that. It's all about being consistent. I think this is one of those years you're going to see a little more consistency. You know, a few years ago, they went to the combination of playing on a Monday and a Wednesday. 
and that way you can't come back and throw, you know, maybe in relief uh, your starter or those kind of combinations. It's kind of less than that now. What do you think about some of the things with a pitch count? Because uh, today really sets the tone for the rest of the week. I guess it really only comes into play if you get that uh, issue with the pitch. Uh, if you get uh, a couple of games in and you get a rain out and you have to make up some games and rain outs. Yeah, it all boils down to, you know, depends on how you start the week as to what you can do mm -hmm. to finish the week. And this pitch count might impact teams more often later on down in the season than it is of right now. Yeah, I, I look at a team who won a championship about maybe five, six years ago, Matt Plummer's East Peoria team. They would go three three innings with a guy. They bring in another guy. That kind of fits his kind of rotation with it. Does. It, it does. Know, in regards to that. Leadoff batter, one of the conference's best, Michael Dickey, the DH, bats on the right side. And uh, Lucas Ketchum, the big guy, makes the first pitch in for a, a strike is called. And again, first team all-conference from a year ago, the second baseman a year ago. He's the DH today. And, of course, uh, peaking last year, 9 and 22. Lucas Ketchum, the next delivery, breaking pitch, catch the corner, strike two is called. Michael yeah. Dickey, the DH, the leadoff batter. He ain't messing around, Lamp, playing that outer half the plate right now. We have seen Lucas come a long way over the last couple of seasons and a lot of the uh, sports. Breaking pitch out, out to center field. Drake Stroh comes on and meets the fly ball out in center field out you there. You see how the wind kind of held yep. that up, Leon? And one of the things, Drake, again, has a good experience out there, and he just kind of ran to it and kind of floated out there to him. So kind of a shallow center, and the first out on a fly ball. Off the bat of Michael Dickey. Here's Skylar Corrigal. He's the second baseman. And again for Pekin, longtime coach Larry Davis. How long do you think he's been around? It's oh, wow. 17th year for Larry Davis. He helps out with football and, of course, with basketball a few years ago. Yeah, I've heard that name for a long time. <laughs> we saw him this year during football season, and he was uh, bragging about our press box. Remember that? It was. When he came up there, he was all he was all excited about the, they had an opportunity and because a lot of places you go doesn't have quite the, uh, you know, kind of the settings for I certain thought things. I was going to get a pill and a blanket and move <laughs> in. <laughs> And the batter is uh, Coriel. Bats to the right side, up and in with that delivery. Well, the first three pitches were strikes, and the next three are yeah. balls. So it again, evens the count right, 2-2. Two, two. That's what it is. It should be 3-0. 3-0? Oh. Oh. Yeah. All right. I got to talk in there with some paying attention here. So we need to get back to the usual. There's there a strike there. call, 3-1. and one. We'll set the defense as we go along. Coming in at third base, Chase Anderson across the diamond. Clay Schrader up the middle. Dalton Kremley and Devin Downs. And, of course, behind the plate is Clint Wells defensively for the Little Giants. Pitch inside. That took a little bit of a break there, and a ball is called. So a first walk is issued by Lucas Ketchum. Here's Nathan Riggy. He is the third baseman. Bats on the right side. He had second team Carson Thomas a year ago. Nick Campbell, outfitter as well from a year ago from a speaking team. But... The core of this group is underclass. They have, they're deep in pitching in the underclass kids. We'll see one of those in Bryson Swift. Bunted the, uh, to the pitcher. Off to his right, fields it. And a good sacrifice there. It advances that runner down to second base. Nice job there by the uh, Little Giants. So that's the second out of the inning. Coriel down to second base. So a good job there. Fielding the position was uh, Lucas Ketchum. Got off the mound. Here's a hitter, Matt Tharp. No relation to Megan or Don, I understand. Although Don went to school at Pekin, but still mm. not a relation there. So inside pitch is a strike. Tart bats to the right side. He's the shortstop. Our coach Larry Davis. Pekin enrollment to over 2,000 students. One of the larger schools in the Middle Illinois Conference. Tharp off again at the right side and takes the pitch a little bit up there. Not much did it miss. Pretty good location there. One and one with two outs. Runner Coriel at second base. We're at the top of the first 56 degrees. Game time temperature. A little bit of movement out in the center field of that flag and the 380 category. Tattoos this pitch to left field coming on. And it is Luke Randall out there. So a fly ball. And that's the third out of the inning. Four again. One walk. One left on. No hits. No runs. After a half inning, we'll play to the bottom of the first. Canton coming up. Pekin and Canton, no score. Back in a minute. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent. By Spooner Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton. 
Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by Embixler Video Productions. Call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. For Pekin, he gets the warm-up. He's a right-hander. We'll get a little bit of uh, him as we go along here. Catcher is uh, Braden Lavin. Lead off that will be Dalton Crumley, Landon Cummins, and Clint Wells for the Canton Little Giants coming in 6-4, and 0-2 oh in the Middle Illini Conference. They'll play Wednesday at Pekin uh, against uh, Friday. They go to Lewistown for a non-conference game. And then uh, kind of a schedule we're back with you next Monday, I do believe, on our schedule of uh, games coming up here on our broadcast. And, of course, they have uh, Metamora on Monday, and that'll be uh, on the road. And then next Wednesday is when our next game will be on the 19th. So it's on the road at Metamora, then home next Wednesday, our next uh, kind of a baseball broadcast for you. Settle back and enjoy a beautiful weather day out there. Temperatures in the upper 50s. It, uh, again, stayed out sunny enough to warm underneath the grandstand here. When you're underneath the grandstand here, you're at the mercy of any kind of wind or, again, overcast skies makes it pretty chilly under cover. But it's pretty nice under here. It's right always now. it's always overcast under here. <laughs> it's not too bad a weather day. Dalton uh, Kremley leads it off. Nice quick pitch there by Bryson Swift. He's a junior, right hander. They have sophomore Nathan Riggy and Kate Edmonston, younger class group for this uh, core of pitching for Larry Davis. Pitch inside a strike is called. Evens a count one and one. Again, as we mentioned, they do have a pitch count, but it affects like uh, between one and 30 pitches. You get a, if you pitch that many, then you have the day off in between, and then goes on the number of, again, some of those pitch counts extends to a couple of days, the higher they go in the amount, yeah. and all the way up to about four days. You have, if you get up past the 90 mark there, so it's about a four days rest. So. Yeah, if you got three games in a week, it can impact you too, quite yeah. a bit, actually. Ball and two strikes. Crumley bats on the right side. On deck, Landon Cummins, followed by Clint Wells. Good top of the order for this little giant team. Breaking pitch. Stroked it to third base. That's Riggy. Cross the diamond. And a 5-3 on the ground out off the bat of uh, Crumley there. That young man at third's got quite the can in there. Man. <laughs> well, I told you this uh, underclass group of pitchers, and he's a sophomore, Riggy, at third Ooh. base. And he could tell, man, he didn't waste time getting rid of the ball there. That's some giddy up on that. Here's Landon Cummins. We saw him play last year. Terrific job out in right field. We saw most of the games last year for him defensively. He's uh, worked his way up into number two in this order for Coach Mike Walters and Mike Emery helping out this season. This will be Mike Walters' final year as the head baseball coach and taking right over will be the associate there, Mike Emery. So we'll be looking forward to working with uh, Michael. Yeah. He helped out and substitute a couple of times during our broadcast this year. Mike's very knowledgeable in a lot of the different sports, but uh, mainly baseball, and uh, that's pretty much his expertise when you take a look at him. Played for Coach Bennett back in the day when they have Steve Bishop and uh, in company there, Matt Rader, who's going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. So that was a pretty good core of kids out of that group that, uh, again, uh, Mike Emery played for and uh, played with. They still hold the distinction of having one of the highest wins in the school history. So Mike brings it with a lot of great tradition in uh, Little Giant baseball and in sports here. Good Two coach. balls and a strike to Cummins. Good coach, too. Yep. We're his way. He's been at the sophomore level for a couple of years. Up and in to Cummins. Falls behind in the count. Three and one. Clint Wells on deck for the Little Giants. One of the leading hitters. Off the stretch here. And hits softly to the shortstop. Again, grounded there. And a long throw. And it's going to be a 6-3 put out. 
a little bit of different navigating on that throw there. Well, I think the thing there is the shortstop didn't actually fully charge the ball. He was kind of worried about that in-between hop. Yeah. It almost got the best of him. He kind of bobbled it a little bit. We'll see what strength in his arm to get the, to get the guy out. Yeah, you see him kind of lose his balance a little bit there, yeah. off balance when he kind of threw the ball. So well, when, that, when that ball goes from the grass to the dirt, it's a whole different meaning Absolutely. as far as spinning the ball. A couple of ground outs to begin the uh, get inning here. Here's Clint Wells. He digs in from the right side there. And uh, you take a look at uh, Clint and his offense so far in the season. You take a look at the opportunity as we go along here with his uh, numbers and those type of things here. One of the leading hitters back up the middle. It shoots for a base hit for a Clint. And again, a good start here with two outs. Clint Wells again gets on the base pass, and he's already putting time in the offseason in for football. I see a lot of the different uh, weightlifting opportunities there for the Little Giants, and he's yeah, my, one of the main ones. My one of the leaders son actually there. goes with him. He Is goes that for right? track. Yep. That's awesome. You know, Clint was hitting 483, and he picked up his 15th hit of the spring. That's tops in the category for this uh, Little Giant baseball team. Here's Drake Strode. Bats to the right side, chops it. Get in hole. End of the hole to the shortstop. Long throw. He's going to beat it. Oh, he uh, called him out. And again, long throw. There's one of those things. I tell you what, I thought he had to beat out. And again, it's a ground out, six to three to end the inning. But one left on the base path as well. We had uh, one hit, no runs. We played through one in the Midland Eye Conference action. Peak and Canton scoreless. Back in a minute. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton, Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton, by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions, call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. Grab a drink of water. We're ready to go. Back into the uh, top of the second. It'll be Sullivan, uh, Swift, and Lavin. Uh, the hitters in the second inning. And as we mentioned a little bit, uh, the inside, Lucas Ketch will be his third start. He has a one and two record. He's allowed uh, 12 hits so far on the season. Again, he had uh, the walk issue to be his third. Uh, he had 11 strikeouts, and he has a 1.31 uh, average ERA. As a team, Bob, collectively, they're 1.44. That's pretty good over the stretch of the seasons here. It's again, it's been boiled down to not being able to score in a lot when, of competition. Yeah, you know, when when you're at a record of six and four and your ERA is under one five, one thing it tells you is you're not scoring a lot of runs. No, nope. now very few yeah. in those games. They broke out over the weekend, had a good outing. Got a big win uh, against uh, Lincoln. Put a bunch of runs on the scoreboard there. Had 16 hits. The thing about it is you got to break out more than once yeah. to get that offensive potency on a consistent basis. Here's Zach Sullivan. He bats on the right side. And a ball tap foul. Coach Emery pops out of the dugout. Have a little different group helping out with the assistants. Of course, uh, the freshman level, T.J. Barnard. And sophomore coach is, again, Josiah Martin. Those are some of the underclass coaches in the program this season. A little bit low and goes back to the screen there. As we take a look at their lineup on deck, will be Bryson Swift. He is the pitcher today. And he is a junior on deck for Pekin. Around the outfield, Luke Randall out on the left, Drake Strode, center field, man's the 380 territory out there. Out in right field, Landon Cummings for the uh, Little Giants. Playing a little bit shallow out on the left is Luke Randall coming in there. So again, here's Zach Sullivan. Bats from the right side for Pekin. Catch him a little bit low, that delivery. Well, and that's part of the thing that I've noticed on this delivery. He's letting that release point a little late. Yeah. Everything's coming to the outside. And he's come a little bit forward. He's a little bit off the side there. And you got to. Yep. It's just repetition. 
And here's the delivery, a little bit better. He slings it, flies it out to center. Drake in his tracks, moves to his right and makes the catch out there. And a fly ball. That's the first out of the second inning here. And another opportunity for Drake Strode out in center field for the Canton Little Giants. You got a good defense out there. Mm -hmm. Just throw some strikes and let them help you out. Yeah, that was, you know, that was kind of what I was alluding to. You look at the experience this uh, group does have, yeah. and it is. When you got Lucas Ketchum pitching here with the positions they are right now, they're as good as they're going to get, I think, okay. defensively out there. We call that an F8. Yep, fly ball out there in the same spot out there, put away off the bat of Swift. So quickly a couple of up, two up, two down in the second inning. And again, a walk issued in the opening inning. They strand a runner. We had a hit, and we stranded a runner as well. We had the second inning. And the hitter is uh, Braden Levin. That's on the left side. He's the catcher. Catch him outside with that delivery. And on deck will be Braden Brown. Tail end of this lineup for Pekin. They've been rained out a few times. Casually there. They're 1-4, 0-1-1 one oh one in the Middle Illini Conference. Pitch, Ooh. pretty good pitch there. Deserved a little bit better fate in regards to the call there. <laughs> wow. A couple of pitches have been pretty borderline here, not favorable for the home team here this afternoon with two outs, catch him and the delivery, slaps it out to left field. And again, nice job running catch to the line out there was Luke Randall. So all fly balls in that second inning. Three up, three down, no hits, no runs. Nobody left after inning and a half. We head to the bottom of the second, no score, Canton and Pekin. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent. By Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton. Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton. By Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton. By Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. We get to the action uh, bottom of the second. And again, Swift will warm up. And it'll be uh, Shake, Randall, and Schrader. You know, Luke's another player who out there I thought made some pretty good strides in basketball. And again, he just seems like a natural out in left field that there handles it to under, under, can, you can't get really too caught up. The ball hit, looked like it hit off the bat. Looked like it's going to carry out there. And he knows he's going to compensate full with that wind as well. He did a pretty good job on that last play there. Well, with him being a lefty, the ball's tailing away from him towards mm -hmm. the foul line. He read that really well. We've talked about it before. It's always funny, like early in the season of a different sport, you see a kid had success. Success, and he carries over to the next board. Here's Anthony Shake hitting 261, and he's had six hits, and again, all been singles with a couple of RBIs. Grounds to the shortstop, overhand throw there by Tharp, and it's a 6 3 ground out here, the uh, opening of the second inning with a first out of the inning. Luke Randall, followed by Clay Schrader, and again, Clay has been terrific on the mound from time to time when he's been able to get in there, so they're trying to get that uh, rotation in here with the games coming up this Wednesday and Friday as well for the Canton Little Giants. Luke digs in from the right side against this Pekin defense. Breaking oh. pitch drifts outside. Oh, the nice little Uncle Charlie there. You got the Riggy playing third base off the bag there at short start. Coriel at second and Johnson at first base and Lavin is the catcher. Breaking pitch up and in. It's 2-0. and oh. And again, here in this uh, bottom of the second inning, we'll have uh, Cardinal baseball from Washington, D.C. right after this game against the Nationals. They beat us up pretty badly last night, so we'll try to bounce back tonight. 3-0 is the count. Clay Schrader on deck for this little giant offense. I know all about struggles. Mine's doing just the same as <laughs> did last year. It's, it's, it's hard to kind of pinpoint certain things, isn't it? Right now for us, it's bullpen and catching. Yeah. Man, we struggled last night in the bullpen. And walk inside, so Randall takes a one-out walk. 
That's the first walk issued by Swift, giving up a hit back in the first inning. Here's Clay Schrader. Take a look at the Clay. 26 at bat, six hits, and he's had an RBI. He's hitting 231. And as a first baseman for this uh, Little Giants. Six and four, as we mentioned, and 0 and 2 in the conference. Both of those conference losses, close games, winnable games against Washington last week. Off the stretch, quick throw over there. You could tell everybody in the dugouts yelling back. <laughs> that started a few years ago. Oh, yeah. People doing that. Off the stretch again. Bryson brings it home and a foul ball. Had the man running off of uh, first base. That was Randall. Mike Embry played on the 92 93 squad with uh, Bennett. 31 and 8. Went all the way to the sectional semifinals. Lost to Chatham 3 to 2 at Springfield. Steve Bishop, Matt Rader, Garrett Buskert, and Emery. Michael was 8 and 3 during that year. That's really the last that uh, we've had some other uh, tournament appearances. My 71-72 class went to the state tournaments back in Ron Fanestock days. And again, there were a couple of other groups that have gone. But I know it's it's always tough not to see a team get back past the regionals for a few years. So on, you know, a couple of years ago, we got to the uh, section. We got to the uh, final eight yeah. in uh, the two-way and uh, lost to Rock Island Alleman a couple of years ago. Off and running, got a good opportunity sliding in safely. Good job, got a good jump there was again, Luke Randall. So the steal at second base now. And is that correct, two and one? Uh, it should be two and two. Two and two, okay, two and two. I just wanted to double check there. Batting here with one out, Schrader. Breaking pitch, took it. And I guess it would nope. only yep. one. <laughs> okay. I had to double. Yeah, I, I thought I saw his finger go up, but I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't certain there, because we haven't had a lot of consistency between umpire and the scoreboard from one time to time. Two two. Chop two. Shortstop holds the runner. Now he breaks, and here he comes to third, sliding in. Nice job, Randall. Good job there. A little hesitation, and was out at first base. Again, 6-3 and a ground out. And again, good advancing by Luke Randall there. We waited to the right opportunity there. And a nice slide into third base. Randall will be in there now with two outs. He didn't give it away too soon, did he? Did a pretty good no. job making the break there. It was executed really quite well. As soon as the player committed the first, he was no. off and running. So Jace Anderson bats on the right side for this uh, Little Giant team. Breaking pitch on the corner, a strike is called from Bryson Swift. And an opportunity here, see Pekin for the first time on the season here. They come in at uh, one and four, swinging out of the strike zone, got him to chase that pitch. And if you're gonna commit to the curveball, you gotta swing at the curveball. Yep. You're kinda hesitant on that swing. So no balls, two strikes with, uh, again, two outs. I guarantee you're gonna see a curveball again. Runner at third is Randall. Puts the catcher rolling under the gun with that runner at third. Told Breaking you. pitch, foul ball. It's probably all he's going to throw to him. Yeah. Get a pretty good read, even at a, even at this age. Pitchers have a pretty good understanding, don't they, of a selection of pitches and on their own. They and the catcher work pretty good together. So the runner at third with two outs and an 0-2 count coming up to Anderson. He digs in for the right side for the Little Giants. Scoring opportunity. Dashes down the line at third. Breaking pitch. Ooh. That's all he's going to throw. Yep. So a ball one, one and two. Not going to give in. He's not going to give him a fastball to kind of bust by the infield here. And hopefully Jays ain't looking dead red. Yep. You know, he needs to sit back and try and hit that curveball. It's in there for a strike. One and two. Ball and hit out to center field. Center fielder Brown goes back, moves to his right, and the lefty makes the catch out there in center field. But the Little Giants threaten, come up the walk, a stolen base, ended up at third, stranded there, a second base runner stranded. And we played through two complete. We're still scoreless in the middle on I. Pekin and Canton back with the third inning here on WBYS. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent. By Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton. Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton. By Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A. 
and by M. Bixler Video Productions, call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. Back here as we enter the third inning, it'll be the bottom of the order uh, for Pekin. Uh, Brown and Paul will be coming up uh, for the uh, Dragons. They're coming in at 1-4, and 0-1. Oh coming up, of course, uh, the Peoria Chiefs were again rained out last night, so we'll try a double hitter tonight, 5 and 6.30. It's good to get back uh, doing our Monday usual chat with uh, Nathan Beliva. Oh, yeah, he told me he talked to you when I saw him. He's, a, he's an awesome guy, man. I'll tell you what, he has such great knowledge of the Midwest League. I just kind of turned it over to him, and he just uh, kind of knows all the – Players that are up now and have gone through their, uh, gone through the, you know, the professional semis and those type of thing. I think he's, yeah, he does. Uh, he did the uh, basketball this year for the uh, state tournament for girls. He did an outstanding he job did. in that. Yeah, we talked about 15 minutes yeah. tonight. So one and one is the count. Uh, Lucas Ketchum, and again outside with that delivery. That's me. You guys have to together. <laughs> no, he does a good job. He yeah. does. You didn't give me you tantalize him with another any kind of foreign cigars or anything like uh, that. I That's get, his I favorite. Get, I get some dirt on you. So. <laughs> Swing right to that pitch. Strike two. Two and two. He goes. He'll save it for a Monday when he's not in the right? mood. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, how about dies laughing? <laughs> yeah, when he when I have to wake him up on Monday mornings. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Two two. Breaking pitch, and a foul ball. Drifts overhead here. Boy, quite a different uh, setting we had yesterday. You know, we had overcast guys were watching the radar, and we've seen that uh, front push through here, but didn't really know the extent of the uh, hail damage. Major damage, a lot of vehicles out here, cars, and a swing, and a strikeout. That's the first out of the inning. That's the first K of the game. Yeah. Strikeout. So, again, it'll be, as we mentioned, Chase Paul. Last in the order for Pekin here. They'll be top of the order with a Michael Dickey on deck. Ground ball. Third baseman backs up. Makes the play across the diamond. Nice strong throw there. 5-3 nice on the put out. Nice job there by Jace Anderson. It's two outs in this third inning. You can, you can see why he plays. He doesn't hesitate when no. the ball's hit to him as to what to do, back up or charge. And it used to be such a tough one to see how much they've cut out there uh, just above the bag there in the grassy area there, how much they really cut out. A lot of that dangerous lip there for a number and, of years. You know, like I said earlier on that one play for Beacon, you know, when that ball goes from the grass to the dirt, mm -hmm. I mean, the spin is totally different. Two down, top of the order. Here's Michael Dickey. Hits the ball, scooped up by the shortstop. Taps the glove, throws it across the diamond. Nice play there by Crumley. And a 6-3 on one of their better offensive players. As we go to the bottom of the third after two and a half, still scoreless, Pekin and Canton here on WBYS. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church located on North Avenue A and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington located in Farmington and in Canton by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. Check out our, uh, again at this time, stats pitching-wise. Let's give you an update on the uh, pitching at this uh, category. Uh, Swift and catch him there, Bobby. Well, right now for Lucas, it's a clean three innings. Only one walk and no strikeouts, no hits allowed. And Bryson Swift, two innings pitch, only one hit and one walk as well. 
That's the update on our pitching stats brought to you by the Graham Health System throughout the year. Bring you the runs, hits, errors, stats uh, throughout the year. Make sure you check out the Graham Thrift Store, 175 North Main Street in Canton. Along is uh, Mark Bixler and Bixler Review Production and Bob and Leon with the hit off the end of the bat there. Downs and a scoop by the uh, pitcher there. Nice job there. It goes 1-3. Ball was hit right off the end of the bat off of uh, Devin Downs. Now, if that infield's all nerf with a spin on that ball, it could have been a base hit. Yeah. That's what grass can do to you. And again, you can see that it's just like one of those pool shots there. Man, it just kind of squirmed out there. They get the pitcher, let it settle in, and then he scooped an underhand. That's the first out of the inning. Would have made Willie Moscone proud. <laughs> Top of the order here. Here's Dalton Crumley. Grounded out his first plate appearance. We slipped into the bottom of the third, a scoreless game. Peeking in Canton here today. Breaking pitch there by Swift. I've been pretty impressed with him. He moves the ball up and down. He does a pretty good job there. Young arm uh, for this uh, Pekin baseball team. And it's 1-0, up and in, 2-0. Dalton's a pretty patient guy. Played a little bit, a couple of games as a freshman and then played a lot. Sophomore season, moved up, you know, the ladder there, playing pretty much at shortstop. He will pitch from time to time as well. Up and out of the strike zone, it's 3-0. Make him throw you on. He's issued one walk, and again, that was back in the second. He's gave up the hit by Wells. A couple of base runners, but a little giant so far. In this game, we've stranded two. And here's a delivery and a walk to Crumley. It's a good start here. It is. With a one out. Now, you get the meat of the order. Cummins handles the bat well. Good contact. You get Wells. An opportunity for this uh, little giant team maybe to get the run or two. With one out. Crumley will run first base. Got a little bit of speed out there. Cummins bats on the right side. They flash the signal. We'll see what we try to execute here. In this bottom of the third with one down. Pitch a little bit low. Good job by the catcher there, Lavin. He's having a hard time Locked finding it. the strike zone yep. this inning. That's seven pitches thrown. Six of them are outside of the zone. It's easy. I know it's a pitcher myself a few years ago. I and mean, it's tough to get mechanically back. Where you feel comfortable again. Where, you know? do, you, where do you get saying a few years ago? <laughs> Be honest, a lot of years <laughs> a ago. A lot of years ago. <laughs> but it was. It's a, it's a really a tough mindset to get your when you were pitching confidence the back. When you were basketball. <laughs> and nobody was using gloves. Funded the ball. Great execution there. And again, and it's going to be, I don't know if he gloved it or not at yeah, first. Did he grab right it? In the ball, yeah. Got a good, good job of the catcher there getting out there. But a, what heck of a bunt there. Great job there. And again, and down your, to second base. And now you got your leading hitter trying mm -hmm. to get that run in and Clint Wall. So you got two down. And scoring position will be Crumley. And here's Clint Wells. Pretty good stats on the year of Clint. Again, he's had uh, 15 hits now, six doubles. He's had 12 RBIs. Let's try to get to the lucky 13 here. And he's hitting 483, one of the leading hitters on this squad. Again, with the runner at second base and two down. Clint belts That's the it. pitch by the That's third base on. bag. Turns the corner. Crumley turns, and he will come in to score. Nice That's bit of hitting it. there. You know what you call out, Leon? ABC baseball right there. Yeah. He wasted no time. He took the first pitch, and he just hit it by the bag at third. And an RBI. Hearing at an early age, I heard just really terrific things about Clint. And he's even a better person. That's all, you know, he good, is. he's a terrific he's a athlete. Kid. He's an awesome kid. He handles a lot of situations thrown at him. Ball popped up here off the bat of uh, Drake Strode. Out of play here. So an RBI by Clint Wells. The little Giants get on top here in the third, one to nothing. And the way the pitching's been, it might be all you need. One or two runs here. See if Drake can add to it. Clint runs at first base, gets a little bit of a lead over there. Swift tries to hold him a little bit close now, looks over there, and brings the pitch out of the strike zone, one and one. That thing is right in the wheelhouse, too. Those are hard to lay off of. Yeah, a lot of pitchers really like, you know, batters like to go up the ladder there, don't they? Oh, yeah. It's the most tantalizing kind of look there. The ball's the size of a watermelon <laughs> when it's eye high. One and one from Swift, breaking pitch, that hits it into hit. the hole. Shortstop, and it's going to be a base hit. Did a good job there. Wasn't going to backhand it. He got the hit. That moves uh, Clint Wells to second base. And a couple of hits in this inning. The big sacrifice there by Cummins, though. That was a That's terrific good. play. Was. You know, and then Clint, you know, pulling the ball down the third baseline, mm -hmm. you know, between the third baseman and the foul line. 
and you know got that run on with a nice play. So an opportunity here with two down, and again first and second. Here's Anthony Shake, the DH today. He grounded out his first plate appearance. Yeah, once we first and second, he can get another run on. He's trying to cover. Bryson Swift here works off the stretch. And he brings the breaking pitch in the dirt there. Good job of the catcher. Didn't exactly know where it was and located out in front of the home plate area. So Anthony with a 1-0 count here. Opportunity to kind of move the train around here, man. Move the people on base here. Get it out of that right field area there. You're going to score yeah, one. That's what I'm saying. Yep. Yeah. Take the ball the other way. Hits right it back middle. up the middle of the shortstop. And that's too easy. Got the uh, out at second. But again, uh, the fielder's choice there, the out. But the Little Giants capitalized to get a couple of hits, one run. And they strand a couple. But the Little Giants get on top in this game. Big RBI off the bat of Clint Wells. It scored Dalton Crumley. Little Giants after three. Lead it one to nothing against Pekin. Back here in one minute. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton, Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton, by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions, call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton, and by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. Tight game here. We head to the fourth. Uh, Little Giants get on the scoreboard. They lead it one to nothing. We head to the fourth. It'll be two, three, and four in the order for Pekin. And to stick around, we'll have our outstanding player performance of the game. It's brought to you by Advanced Rehab Sports Medicine on our post-game show. Brought to you by Big Rack Steakhouse. After three innings between these two pitchers, Lucas Ketchum has thrown 29 pitches. Bryson Swiftly has thrown 41. Yeah, had a little longer against in that inning there. The last two have really yeah. got his pitch count up. He struggled there. What he fell behind the count a couple times, Twice. three and zero. Oh. Yep. And uh, first pitch to Skyler Coriel. Yeah. He walked back in the first inning. That's the lone runner on the base pass for Pekin in this game. Lead it off in the fourth here. Let's catch him. You know, like uh, the big guys in the uh, again in that major leagues always say, "Well, here's your one run." <laughs> Get to work here. Yeah. <laughs> they got to shut them down the we rest of the way here. You knew yours. That's right. Fourth inning in action. It's 1-1. Pitch foul ball out of the right side. Look out down there. Pitchers count, 1-2. and two. Yeah. They've done a terrific job here over the uh, last few years, really getting this diamond in great shape. Bill Lights, he does a terrific job here. Infield grass, nicely uh, manicured uh, yesterday. They cut it, and uh, wouldn't you know it, it had the hail. There's a base hit. And the first of the game for Pekin to lead it off here in this fourth inning. Second base runner. So one hit, and here's Nathan Riggy. Another one of those underclass kids in this group here for uh, Pekin. When you take a look at a lot of them, he's a sophomore. He'll bat here. He tattooed one last mm -hmm. at that. Luckily, he was right at somebody. Yep. So runner at first. See what the defense here playing up is Anderson right at the grassy area, a little deeper at short. Same way as on the infield, right side downs. And the uh, batter is Riggy. I think they called that was a ball, ball there, ball, right? Yeah. Yeah, don't go by the scoreboard. You're about a half <laughs> hour, get, about a half hour late. You'll get a little lost. <laughs> Want to know? I wonder if Butch is running that thing. <laughs> Lucas catch him. And a little bit low. Tantalizing pitch. Didn't go after it. No balls, two strikes. Somebody will tell him that, Bob. You know that. <laughs> he don't scare me. He, he don't bother me anymore. As old you know? as he is, I cannot run him in a wheelchair. 2-0 -oh pitch. Just a little bit low. Try to be a little bit too fine. In this uh, at bat here, and to me, for Lucas, it's the release point is getting him yeah. the most as far as these inconsistencies. And Clint goes out there and has a little conversation with him. He said, "Dan, just kind of slow down a little bit here." So you want a veteran catcher to do, you yeah. know, it's a, you're going to call the signals, go out there and tell him, "Hey, just relax and throw it right to my glove wherever I put it." Run at Coriel is at first now, three and zero to Riggy. 
Let's see if he has the green light here at 3-0. Oh. Off the stretch again, and Lucas, the big guy, brings it and hit out to dangerous territory. That ball carries a long ways out there to right center. Turning the corner at second, Coriel comes to third. He is pointed home, a double, and they can't get the, uh, again, they cut off back end out there. It's a double by Riggy. Went the other way, and I mean, the power area out there. He was not cheated on that delivery. Hit it out to the right center. So with the double, Base hit after Corey Allen were tied one apiece, that's still the, with nobody out. That's the worst thing as a manager. Mm -hmm. You get that run, you work for it, you come out there to play some defense, and you give it right back. So a couple of hits, extra base hit there by Riggy. We could see that ball. It was carrying. It was going to go long distance out there in that yeah, area to right center. He's got some thump in that mm -hmm. swing, doesn't he? They got a couple of kids that are really nice center class kids. You can tell with this uh, group with the veteran coach Larry Davis in his 17th year. That's what keeps you around, doesn't it? You go through a spell there and may not get quite what you want out of certain seniors, and then you get a new group of uh, young kids, and it uh, kind of restores. A yeah. yeah, it's just a cycle. Here's Matt Tharp. Runner at second, nobody out. Coach Walters, and he's a little bit low with those deliveries right now. So it's 1-0. On deck will be Zach Sullivan for Pekin. Try to get their first conference win. They're 0-1. And it's 1-4 overall. Here's the pitch, 1-0. Off the stretch, Lucas looks him back. Here's the delivery. Chopped. And it's going to be a foul ball just outside the chuck line in the bag at third base. Goes for a foul ball. You can see, you can see even Anderson is still protecting that just in case it would happen to slip down the line. No, you can't allow the extra base hit. No. You do that and they're going to score another run. So one and one. Again, Tart Patch on the right side digs in for Pekin. And a 1-1 one -one game here. Big double by Riggy. Ties this game up in the fourth inning. Off the stretch, Lucas. They bunt the ball to the first base side. And again, the cover is the second baseman. And he grabbed it, made the grab. That's a save there by that second baseman down. That's an E1. Wow. So it's again, it's a high throw, but he saved it from going down. He did. So it's an E1 on good. the throw. And then over to the third will be Riggy. You make a good throw, that's an easy out. Yeah. Again, it's just one of those things. Even after you get to that point, underhanding, it's the safest probably thing there. But uh, again, the runner was bearing down, down to first base, inside. Here's Zach Sullivan. So a couple of hits and an error. Again, with the uh, runners at first and third now with nobody out. Big opportunity for Pekin to get on top of this game in a 1-1 tie. Off the stretch, they bring it a little bit low. Clint shifts the feet there. Good, excellent job there blocking that, not allowing that uh, run to score from third. See what third and does there at first base so for Pekin. And now the scoreboard can allow that to be a hit. I no. will never know. No. no, it can't be. <laughs> it's impossible. Again, off the stretch, Ketchum brings it, and it's hit straight out to center field. It bounces for a base hit. Had to wait. Quick throw into second. Should have been thrown to second there, but again, it's going to be a base hit. Run scores. It's a 2-1. And Tharp goes down to second after the RBI there. Drake really had no play on the ball. It just kind of kind of fell out there. He didn't really kind of, you know, he's tried to charge the ball out there. But again, he can't allow that, to, again, uh, the throw through there. Well, and, you know, as far as Drake goes, you know, he made the right decision. He's kind of in between on yeah. that one. You know, take the bounce and make the good throw. So three hits in this inning, two runs, and still nobody out. And throw down to second base there. And still now with first and second. So it's again a couple of hits, the double, the throwing air. Have put the Pekin on top of this one, two to one. They still threaten with nobody out. That is Bryson Swift. He flew out his first plate appearance. Lucas in a bind here with the runners at first and second. Works off the stretch, ball bunts. And Clint dies, makes a grab. What a play there by Clint. That's a big one. That is. Got in position there to make the dive from home plate. Reading it's a whole key there, Bobby, you know, when you look at that. And reacting. Yeah. 
Told you, he's he just got a terrific athletic prowess about him. There's something about him. He's a very quiet kind of a kid. He was diving for that kick yeah. in the end zone on that one. <laughs> the opposite end there. Maybe you'll see right. that this year. A little Maybe. trickery with <laughs> Coach Person there. You never know, right? Yeah. One down. Here's Braden Lavin. Flew out his first plate appearance. That slows it down a little bit here in this uh, fourth inning now. That's 20 per 15 pitches mm -hmm. in the inning for Lucas so far. So three hits in the inning. The air, their first and second with one down. Catch him works off the stretch for the Little Giants. Breaking pitch a little bit low to the left-handed hitter. 2-0. and oh. Back with you Thursday, we got uh, girls against East Peoria. Should be a great pitching match up there on Thursday. We'll see Butler bound Alyssa Graves, who just had a perfect game thrown in softball after she gave up an eighth inning home run. How do you like to have, you talk about getting that uh, your nerves back and forth of understanding as a teenager gives up a home run in the eighth, get beat one to nothing, and comes right back and pitches a perfect game. You know, the, you, the, the, the next night. I tell you, make that, up. I tell you, regroup. That's how you get over it, isn't it? I guess. 3-0, pitch strike called. We've talked about short-term memory a lot over the years. That's yeah. definitely a prime example. Yeah. So 3-1. and one. Again, runners at first and second with the one down. Big diving catch in foul territory by Clint Wells. Our only out of this fourth. Here's the pitch. Strike two is called. I think it's the same spot you got to keep at this particular hitter. Make it tough for him. Yeah. So, again, three balls, two strikes. We're into fourth. Again, first and second. Again, the left-handed hitter digs in, takes the pitch, and walked mm. him. Borderline pitch. He didn't get that call. Everybody will move up. So, first, second, and third. And the fourth. And here will be Braden Brown. He'll bat with Pekin scoring a couple of times here in the action. No room for runners. Nope. So it's again two to one here in the fourth. And the hitter is Braden Brown. So bases jammed here with the one down. And again, works off the stretch. I think he thinks I'm working the scoreboard, but I'm not. I have no idea. <laughs> So one down, the hitter Brown fouls it out of play here. Play at any base here, Bob. This is going to be key at bat here for Lucas. And the play at home is the most key. And we got a couple of guys warming up down the uh, bullpen down there. We'll check, see who that is popped up here. Will be infield fly. Infield fly it is. He's out. You can hear the umpire called on that. So fly out to the shortstop, second out of the inning. So the infield fly keeps everybody First, second, and third. Looks like uh, Ethan Magnuson, I believe, number 18 down there. Ethan's so warming up. Is. So he's warming up. Down the bullpen area here. But two down now. That was a huge out for Lucas Ketchup. Again, two down now. Bases loaded. Breaking pitch. And it's top foul. Uh, still a bunch of games still to get through in our schedule here during the year. I think a total of about 22, a combination of uh, baseball, softball. So it won't work over too much. It won't overwork Bob too much during the uh, baseball part of our schedule. If you try to, I won't show up. <laughs> and he won't. <laughs> that ball's in a strike. Hit her to chase Paul. It's hard to corral me with nice weather. Swing and got him out in front of that pitch. Nice big breaking pitch there. No balls, two strikes, two outs. If well, I can get minimal damage here, Bob would be huge. Yeah, it would be. You know, just to go down in the dugout, went down by one with the bases loaded, is a, a success. Here's the breaking pitch. Fouled it. Ooh, he almost held on. Clint had it, then got it loose, and again came out of the glove there, but still remains no balls, two strikes. It's like that top spin off the bat, just pulled mm -hmm. that thing around his glove. You got Thurp at uh, third, Sullivan at second, and Lavin at first. They've plated a couple on the strength of uh, the big double off the bat of uh, Riggy. Breaking pitch nice and pitch. struck him out. He watched it, struck him out. In the inning, though, the damage done as they strand three. They have stranded four. Again, they come up with three hits. Had to walk the big double by Riggy. They add to their lead at the end of now. We head to the bottom of the fourth. It's a peak and leading by a score of two to one. Back to Little Giants up in the bottom of the fourth in one minute. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, 
by Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton, by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton, Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton, by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions, call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, 
by Canton Napa, located on North First Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. Fifth inning, uh, we swing two. And again, it'll be Lucas Ketchum back to the mound. Uh, get the, to this particular point here, Bob. Let's take a look at those uh, numbers again. Uh, can you update us on kind of the number of pitch thrown and certain things here between these two? And again, each of the two pitchers, really, both of them, uh, their numbers have gone up, haven't they, after the first it, couple of innings? It has, you know, just just an inning ago, I mentioned, you know, before the start of last inning, you know, Lucas was at 27 pitches and uh, Bryson Swift was at 41. Now you look at it, Leon, and Lucas catch him through four innings, has 53. Bryson Swift, only 50. Yeah, we had uh, Ethan Magnuson warmed up a little bit out there. But we get into the fifth inning of action here. Top of the order will be Michael Dickey, the DH. I know I talked with Larry it was about two weeks ago, and I was trying to get a little bit of beat, and he was telling me he wanted Michael to be the leadoff batter. He put him back in the part of the order. He's one of their top hitters, one of the top hitters in the conference a year ago, and finally gets him back where he wants him to be, and that's the top of the order for this see. for this uh, Pekin team. I can see why. That ball jumps off that bat. Dickey is 0 for 2. Bats here in this fifth inning against Lucas Ketchum. Line drive to the right side. Base hit went the other way. And a base hit by Pekin's Dickey. And that is the fourth hit of the game for Pekin to this act and to this inning. They had, of course, last inning three hits. And uh, I'm trying to think here. Yep, that was the extent of the three hits in the fourth inning and then one in this inning here so far. So again, they start out. Here's uh, Skylar Coriel. That's on the right side for Pekin. He's walked and singled and scored. And again, caught and again dropped. And then it's going to be a wild throw to the right side. Who ended up throwing that? Uh, Anderson, right? Anderson ended up throwing it. Yeah. So again, it's kind of dropped initially there. And then the throwing error by the Little Giants. So again, the runner. Dickey ends up at third, and another error by the Little Giants. Coach Mike Walters in a sprint out there, man. I don't think I've seen him walk that fast out of the out of the dugout there. But that was a tough one. Ball was kind of bunted, and you know, catch him tried to make the grab there. And I couldn't tell if he got it, you know, had it there initially there, Bob, and it looked like it kind of squeezed out. And it then was underneath his glove, yep. and trying to, to pick it back up, he was unable to get a grip mm-hmm. on it. And Jay's had to hurry up and pick it up and throw it through it wildly. First and third, and nobody else. So, again, as we mentioned, another air for the Little Giants, and again, dangerous hitter here with Nathan Riggy. And again, you so take a look inning. at yep. Get that one in the right center field gap that carried for a while. One of these really highly touted sophomores, the underclass group out of this Pekin, and they've really come through in this game here. I can see why. Now, sacrifice at a double and an RBI back in the fourth. They lead it two to one. They can add to it. Nobody out in the fifth. Lucas Ketchum brings it, hits it to the shortstop there, out at second, and they turn the double play, and they get a run. Nice job there off the bat. It goes 6 4 3, twin killing. But again, Dickey will score. It adds their lead to three to one. Nicely turned there by the Little Giants. And that run is earned yeah. because the person on first was due to the air and did not score a guy on the double play. So six, four, three ended up turning it. So two down. And again, here's Matt Tharp. Reached on a throwing air and also flied out. So Pekin gets the extra run here on the double play. Much needed one by the Little Giants there. Lucas Ketchum and a swinging and a strike two. And a tharp as we get into this fifth inning and again, Pekin now with a 3-1 lead. And you never know with a young arm like Swift how far they go with him. We'll get to that, uh, you know, the fifth inning there. Breaking pitch stays up and in. Spread out around the outfield straight away to 380 out there. Center Drake Strode, shallow left field, Luke Randall, and Cummins out in right field for the Little Giants. Here's the next delivery, breaking pitch. It's hit straight out. Drake out there, shades the eyes, and makes the grab out there on a fly ball off the bat of Mark, uh, Matt Tharp there in the inning. They had the base hit, the uh, throwing air, then the double play, and they get a run. 
They add to the lead. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Pekin with a 3-1 lead as we head to the bottom of the fifth on WBYS. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton, Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spooner Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton, by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. For the fifth here, and again so far, uh, three hits by the Little Giants and four by Pekin. Again, the Little Giants have committed a couple of errors. And, of course, the uh, big hits, Nathan Riggy had a big hit, double bug play, ground ball off the bat of uh, Riggy. And, again, Dickey will score on that one, so that's a couple of runs. Pekin has a 3-1 lead as we head into the bottom of the fifth. And the Little Giants are back up the top of the order here. Walken scored. Uh, again, uh, 0 for 1 is Crumley. Leads it off here against uh, Bryson Swift. And he works off the stretcher. Some guys a little bit more comfortable sometimes. Yeah. Men are breaking pitch in for a strike call. Slows down your windup. Gives you better control mm -hmm. off, off the mound. See, a lot of those guys really have... Uh, Look at uh, Steven Strasburg from mm -hmm. Washington. He's been doing yeah. it lately, too. A lot of guys are timing. Slows them down with <laughs> a breaking pitch. And again, stays inside one and one. Makes you think twice when he throws that thing. I'll tell you <laughs> what. He's got some snap on it. Had me moving back. I'm, I'm sitting up here. It's <laughs> so, a good-looking pitch for that yeah. young man. One and one. And, look at and that. he throws the blazing fastball right down the middle. Stri uh, one and two now. Cummins followed by Clint Wells. And a 3-1 peak and lead in the fifth inning. Baseball coverage today streamed online, 1560WBYS.com. Softly hit, booted there by the shortstop, and it's going to be another error. Right off the lip of that yeah. grass, Leon. Well, you can tell his initial reaction, Bob, was the right one, but he then he kind of slowed up a little bit, and then it came really, it really got in on him real you quick. Have, you have to attack those plays. Yeah. You can't let the op dictate what you want to do as far as a defender. See, I thought initially, I thought he was coming in. And well, no, then and he kind of just Yeah, and he kind of stopped. That really was the cost him the air. I think the lip of the grass made him mm -hmm. stop, to be honest, because the ball wasn't even to him yet. Mm -hmm. So that's the, take a look at their second air of this game. And again, here is Landon Cummins. Coach Mike Walters has been one, having watched him the last few years, always bunting in situations like this. I mean, it's a traditional type of thing, but I think even more now with a 3-1 difference here in this fifth inning here. I'm try and get a run back and be on one run yep. down. They could try to cut that in half, right? It's what you're looking That's at. some help. And there's a wild pitch. Yep, overthrew it. That really helps you out. That now what do you do? Knows. Now do you, are you still looking at still bunting the ball, aren't you? I'd say are you hit still, it. Are yeah, you going to hit the ball? Try and get another runner. You can if hit the ball to the right it, side, right? a good chance it's going to score. Yeah. So you can't really change. I mean, it does drastically change what you want to do. Some guys may still stay with the bunt, but. Um, let him take a strike, yeah. you know, and try and see if he can pitch he can hit. So it's 1-0. Oh. Runner Crumley at second after the wild pitch. He brings it, hits it to the right field area. That's a tough one out there. He's coming on, it drops to the base hit. Turning the corner, Comley will stop there, first and third. Here That's you go, it. Bob. Let you, him swing. Yep, let him swing, and it really opened up the gate there. So first and third. A lot of guys would have played a little bit of a conservative there, right? And I think you got to go all out in that point. I think you make the right call there. Well, I think it's a gamble because you got yeah. one of your better hitters at the play right now. Yep. So first and third, good opportunity. And uh, Clint is two for two on the day with an RBI. And Bats here. He's got to find a hole to get yeah. that one run in. Again, works off the stretch at first and third now. And he brings it. He hits it, punches it out the left field. It shoots and a diving, and he caught it. I think they called him out out there, trying to tag up and scoring. And they took a hit away from Wells and a nice play out there. Took it off the turf out there in left field. 
But again, the RBI off the bat of Wells scores Crumley. And that's an unearned run. Yep. So again, the runner stays at first. And that is the first out of the inning. He hit it like a bullet out there, and the left fielder made a good catch out there. Sullivan, he hung on. I thought he was gonna. I thought he was gonna get by him at first. That thing was kind of tailing out there. Well, he jumped late too. Yep. He didn't react to the ball very well off the bat. So they hit the air, the wild pitch, and it's a 3-2 game now. Here's Drake Strode. Again, as the runner Cummins remaining at first base. I just see him try and yep. steal one. So a big day for Wells, two for three with a couple of RBIs. Made some good contact there. Again, Drake takes it outside. It's 2-0. Oh. I think it would be really, you know, you got to be aware of Drake's power and ability too. Same kind of uh, really ability with, again, uh, Clint. Clint stays away a little bit more of the strikeouts. Here with a 2-0 count with one down. Brings the pitch, a tailing pitch. Moves away from him to strike two and one. Late break. Yeah, he didn't throw that big lollipop kind of pitch this time. More like a slider. Yeah. Just by the way it broke. Two and one, runner at first with one down. Hits at a mile high and in foul territory here. Looking dead red, just trying to cover the plate on that curveball. Turned out to be a gorgeous day here. Even yeah. the under the cover here at the grandstand area, we're under the shady area. Most everybody else in the basking in the sunshine out there, but uh, I guess most of the temperatures were in the upper 50s uh, around our area. Nice little bounce back in the kind of a nasty weather day yesterday, that's for sure. Yeah, Mother Nature's had a serious attitude lately. 2-2 <laughs> two, two now. Somebody's put her in her place. Mark. Drake, <laughs> Drake tries to protect the plate here, but the runner at first, 2-2. Two, two. Off and running, it tapped it, and it's a foul ball. I'll tell you what, he had that thing stolen, too. Yeah. Yeah, you want to right idea because contact can put him to third based on where it goes. Yeah, or, you know, you stay out of that double play opportunity to end the too, inning. Yeah. Well, you really want to stay out of that situation. Again, 2-2. Two, two. Anthony Shake on deck, but this is the guy of the moment here. Little Giants want to see continue this inning. And get one run back. 3-2 in the fifth inning. Quick throw over there. Want to keep him a little bit closer, keep a little bit honest there. So again, the air opened it up here in this uh, fifth inning. Then the wild pitch did not help. And then Clint hit the ball like a bullet out the left and a diving catch out there by Sullivan. Really saved another run. And it being a game-saving one, you never Could know. Could be. Kept uh, Cummins really not allowed to move up and scored Crumley. In a 3-2 pitch with one down. Here it comes. Ball out of play here. Staying alive. Temperature at game time is 56 here at Lane, Bob Ends Field. Lane is getting some leg work out there at first base. <laughs> and he's ran the second like three times already. Again, the Little Giants schedule. And again, you look at it uh, next up uh, at Pekin on Wednesday. And then at Lewistown, that'll be on Friday at 430. With one down, 3-2, runner at first. Beacon advantage, 3-2. to two. Tight game here in the bottom of the fifth. Swift brings the pitch. Hits it to right field. Goes to the line. Right fielder staggers and makes the catch out there. It's a dangerous kind of an area to have yeah, to do is, it with the sun. That is not an easy play. And to right field. That's the second out of the inning. And here's Anthony Shake will bat. Fielder's choice and grounded out so far for the uh, Little Giant DH today. Find a hole out there, young yep. man. With two outs now, and the runner remains at first base. Little Giants got on top, one to nothing. Pekin took the lead, two to one. They added a run in the fifth, made it three one, and we get back with the run here in the fifth inning. So with, again, now two down. Throw us to first base. Along with Ambix for Video Productions, Bob Wagner, Leon Gruber with you. And again, a swinging, and to start it out, snowballs and a strike on deck will be Luke Randall. I'd like to see Anthony do something here. See former, again, pitcher Chevy Emkin had a good week. I did. John Wood College. Seen that too. Six innings, did a good job there. See a lot of uh, former Little Giants. Again, having some uh, good opportunities. Mariah Hedges in softball, yep. Illinois College. See, they had a string of 18 straight innings without giving up a run. 
She's right in the mix of that. Fly ball carries out to the right fielder, Paul, out there, and he makes the grab. Little Giants get a run back. Begin in the inning, the one air, the one hit, the one run, and the Little Giants strand a base runner. And we've played through five in this middle on conference game, peaking with a 3-2 lead as we head in the sixth inning on WPYS. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton, Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton, by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions, call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. Back here, the action uh, gets to the top of the six. Uh, Lucas Ketchum, back to the mound. He's given up uh, four hits. The Little Giants have uh, committed a couple of errors. And again, so far, they have stranded four on the base pass as uh, Lucas Ketchum works in the sixth inning. And again, what's, what's the kind of the read you see on Lucas? He had a little bit in that fourth inning, uh, got a little bit uh, out of his, again, some of his mechanics out there, got, got a little bit out of the kilter and only gave up a couple runs, got out of the bases loaded jam to end of that inning, though. Yeah, and that was a 26-pitch inning, too. But you compare it to the last inning, Leon, he went through seven pitches. Right. So he's doing pretty well as far as the pitch count. Right now, it's all about that consistency and that release to get that pinpoint control to throw nothing but strikes. And his teammates got him a run back here, so we got to keep it close here the final couple of innings. As we get into the sixth here, Zach Sullivan made a nice catch out there in left field. Took an extra base hit away from uh, Clint Wells. Little Giants did score on that fly ball. And like I said, if this game ends up like it is, it no. could be a game-saving one, too. Yep. 2-0 well was the count. Lucas, big guy on top, works the next delivery. That's Strike good. is called two and one. That's the release point right there. Yeah, I do too. I like the ball. You keep the ball. He's going down the hill. You're looking at a 6'5 guy coming downhill at you, and that's Watch a tough out. play. Watch how Randy Johnson throws it. Yeah. 2 1. And a ball Ooh. cuts across the plate. You can hear Coach Davis at third base. Ooh. <laughs> you can hear him McClure up here. I think we had a favorable call on that one. 2 uh, 2. That was a home field call. <laughs> and the pitch way out of the strike zone. Could have called that one. 3 <laughs> 2 now. Sullivan has singled an RBI back in the fourth. He's one for two. Here in this sixth inning, it's a 3 2 game. Leadoff batter, and a little bit low with a walk there issued to lead off this sixth inning. Take a look at that. I believe that is what, third. third one, yeah, right? Luke's on a short leash, too. Yeah. He needs to, to throw strikes and get out of this inning unscathed. Again, we had Ethan Magnuson who was warming up a couple of innings ago, but then since that point. So it's Bryson Swift. Matt's here. He's done a pretty good job of limiting the Little Giants to, again, two runs in this game. In the sixth, get a quick throw. Clint throws behind the runner down there. And again, Little Giants trying to slow the game down here, trailing three to two. Runner at first with that walk issued. Swift bats followed by Lavin. Lucas works off the stretch, the big guy. Here with a 1-0 count. Brings it. They wanted to bunt the ball. And it's a strike call, 1-1. One one. He committed to that one. Yep. The quickness, the footwork of uh, Clint is really terrific. And you don't look at a lot of things. He blocked the pitch earlier. Again, he made the diving catch in foul territory. That one, even the ball would have bunted. He was right there on the spot there to make a play on it. So it's 1-1. One and one. Again, Lucas off the stretch here with that runner at first. Brings it. And a ball is called. Two and one. Laid off that pitch. Didn't attempt. Folks got their hoodies on and enjoying a nice little weather day out there. I think we're going to warm up into the 70s next couple of days. And then back in that rain kind of cycle again. 
Ball bunts it, quick throw down. Ooh, got away from the uh, first baseman there, but a strike is called, 2-2. Two -two. Big out here by Swift here would be huge for Lucas and the Little Giants here. I can see him throw him a hook. Mm -hmm. Be unexpected there, I think. When I agree. Clint's very capable, again, blocking that plate, doing a good job, keeping throw, that runner in check. Throw in when he's mm -hmm. thrown to us. So runner at first, the leadoff walk in the sixth. Pekin leads at 3-2 to two. We're in the top of the sixth. Again with that 2-2 two -two pitch coming up from Ketchum. Brings it swinging. Hit a breaking pitch there. Got him a strikeout. That's the first out of the inning. And he's had a couple of strikeouts in the game so three. far. Three to this point. Yep. And a big one there with one down now. Here's uh, Braden Lavin. He's walked and flew out to left field. Bats in the left side. See the right uh, second baseman there, Downs, where he'll play in there. He has to move a little bit with that left-handed hitter. Breaking pitch and a called strike is giving that pitch there, catching any part of the plate there, and they give him that pitch there. That was on black. Yeah. So pitch to the left-handed hitter goes for a strike. Lucas works off and a little bit bigger lead at first. Outside of the strike zone, Clint grabs it, one and one. See what the Little Giants will have coming up. Bottom part of the order, Randall, Schrader, and Anderson. Six, seven, and eight in that order for Little Giants. Down three to two here, trying to keep the game close here. Inside, just missed inside. Two and one. I like that pitch, though. I Keeping in on the bat, don't get him a chance to get those hands extended he, to this he, right side. Get in on his hands, he can get into a double play. Yep. Lucas works off the stretch with a 2-1 delivery. Runner at first looks. Not going anywhere. Foul back to the screen. It's evens a count 2-2. Coming up right after this one, we'll join in progress. First pitch is uh, slated for 6.05 from D.C. tonight. Cardinals in the Nationals. I want need a little, bounce back game tonight, though. I watched a little bit of it last night, boy. I got ugly quick, didn't it? Yeah, it was a you know close tight game there, yeah. and then it got away from one him. One inning was brutal. Yeah. Two two count here with one down. Runner at first in the sixth, brings it, and flared out to left field and foul territory here. Luke never gave up on him, and he was still shagging of, it out there. That was a lot of real estate to cover too. Got a girls. Uh, track meet over there. I believe it's uh, Peek and Morton and Canton uh, in the Memorial Stadium going on there. Short distance from our Bob Ams Field here, the former athletic park here they back in the day be, here. They don't be messing up our press box. <laughs> I don't think so. They don't have lanyards. Better not. 2-2 <laughs> two -two pitch. Breaking pitch out to right field right at the hitter. Had to uh, let it drop in front of him. I don't think he had a chance to look like he didn't see it at first there, Bob. But a base hit and runner down to second now with a one out. Well, I thought it was hit hard enough that he's going to be able to make a play on that too. and just kind of let it die out there. I know, I know when the sun makes it difficult to read yeah. that thing, but I thought he had enough time, but it's hard to say unless you're out there trying to make mm -hmm. a play yourself. You got Webb as a courtesy runner. Matt, the first, I believe. Yeah. So Webb is a pinch runner there. And second base is Sullivan with one down. Here's Braden Brown, another left-handed hitter, hits it out to center field. Right to him. Opportunity here. Drake's got a good arm, makes the catch, and throws to the cutoff man. That's a big out, number two of the that inning. That is. Big first pitch there to Brown, and he skied it out to center field. So it keeps Sullivan at second, Webb at first, now with two down. And bottom part of the order here, Chase Paul. Well, if he could get out of this, it would be a huge boost for the Little Giants going into the bottom of this inning here. Agreed. Big opportunity. Two down at first and second. Chase Paul. You got to keep your focus there. Don't let him off the hook here. The bottom part of the order here. A lot of times, this bottom part of the order will make you pay for it. You're pitching yourself to stay in this no. game. You're not trying to pitch your way out of it. You know, I heard a number of years ago that Sandy Koufax used to say he was more concerned a lot of time with eighth and ninth place hitters than a lot of times the upper part of the order there. Yeah, because they never get respect. Yep. And I think he was well aware of that. And again, one and one is the count. We're in the sixth inning with two down, first and second. And a 3-2 peak and lead. Middle and I conference baseball for you today. Here's the runners at first and second. And again, here's the pitch from Ketchum. Boy, check swing there. He wanted to chase after that pitch. It was in the dirt. 
two and one. Have a lot of our post game for you coming up. Brought to you by Big Rex Steakhouse, North Main and Canton. That'll be coming up on the Little Giant baseball post game show. Two one pitch, here it comes. Bell to left field, it gets down, a base hit. It will score Sullivan. Next runner comes in, it got a chance to throw him out and safely in there. Whoa. But uh, Paul with a big base hit scored, and then Webb goes all the way to third. Boy, just got the pitch up there, Bobby. Did too. And he made him uh, pay for it. So we talked about bottom part of the order there, getting a little respect there. They add now, it's a 4 2 lead. All right now, Lucas is at 82 yeah. pitches thrown. Got to get out of the inning here, but two outs now, first and third. Big RBI off the bat of Paul. Top of the order, Michael Dickey. Boy, it doesn't get any easier here. Very dangerous hitter here. First team all conference. They've been able to utilize with uh, Tharp going to short, playing him at the DH. He's normally their shortstop. Top of the order here with two down. Lucas brings the pitch in, chop there, third baseman, can't get it, shortstop, long, long throw, throw across the diamond, and it's not going to be in time, it's going to be a base That's hit. A hit. Yep, yep. I agree. So base hit, another run scores. Base hit here deep in the hole, you're not going to get a chance to get thrown out. Paul goes to second. Couldn't get out of the inning there with the two outs there, Bobby, and again, Paul had the one strike count on him, two and one, and he hit it down the left field line. So runners now at second and first here, Skyler Coriel. They've scored a couple of runs. They lead it five to two now. Lucas pitches it. I don't know if he's trying to get through this. He still looks like he's laboring a little bit out there. Well, so far so it's a 25 pitch inning and 85 for the game. Yeah, that's getting to that high numbers. We get to that particular point and, and get to that count there and he's, again, four days rest after this one. We get to that particular count. So you're pretty much done with him. Line drive, get to the right side just to flick the wrist out there. They're going to hold the runner up. He puts on the brakes. He wanted to come around. Coach was out there to meet him. And again, it moves Paul to third. Second to Dickey and a base hit off the bat of Coriel. I haven't seen any movement. Not one of the change pitchers here with two down. And they're going to put Ethan back out there to warm up, though. Yep. I just saw him talk to him. So in the inning so far, they've had uh, three straight hits. Four hits in the inning. They've had two runs. They can really break it open here, Bobby. Base and a dangerous gonna, hit here with Nathan Riggi. Base hit's going to score, too, and this yep. kid can swing the lumber. Yeah, big double back in the fourth inning. Bats here in this sixth inning. Here's the pitch on the corner. A strike is called. So base is loaded. They've had it a couple of times in this game. They've uh, scored a couple of times. Again, three straight hits. Chance to add to the lead here in the sixth. Pop it up. Play here. Clint, and it goes out of play. Overhead hits the roof here at the grandstand. And the home plate area here. Man, you got him in your count, 0-2. Yep. Now you got to throw something Don't out let of him off the hook here. Throw something out of the track so make sure it's not a bouncer mm -hmm. where Clint has to dive for it, try and keep it in front of him. You know, it's a, you know, you take a look at even the hit to Coriel. He got, you know, he really got fooled on it. Just got the bat head out there. Just kind of flicked it out there in right field. Did what he had to do. Yep. <laughs> so Riggy facing a no ball, two strike count here with two outs. Bases loaded. Catch him here. And the Little Giants try to get out of it. Foul straight back oh, here. Good Boy, pitch. he was he was dead red on that one, though. That was a good pitch, yeah. though. If he's going to hit it, it wasn't going to go very far. See him had to go down and get that pitch. Good location there. That was a nine iron, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so four hits in this inning and a couple of runs. High delivery out of the strike zone. And one and two. Matt Tharp on deck, but this is the guy that really can break this game open here. I think it's going to be the last batter. Yep. Five to two, advantage peak with the bases loaded, two out in the sixth. And Ketchum brings the next one, threw it Got right by him, had a little bit of left, and he gassed it right by him. Big strikeout, but in the inning, 
They had three straight hits at the tail end of that. Get four hits in the inning. Two runs. And they strand three on the base pass. And they have stranded seven in the game. But they hold the advantage here as we head to the bottom of the sixth. They get a couple of more runs. They lead it by a score of 5-2 to two as we head to the bottom of the sixth here. Peak with the advantage over Canton here in WBYS. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton, by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. Take a look at it. Uh, eight hits, five runs. Again for Pekin. Little Giants have had a couple of runs on three hits as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Little breathing room for Bryson Swift. And again for Pekin. They had a couple of runs. Those were big runs. They left the bases loaded for the second straight time. Luke Randall will hit. Oh, and they scored three straight innings. Yep. They scored in the fourth, fifth, and sixth. So again, the advantage again. Pekin. And a swinging. Strike again to Randall. It's one and one to start out the sixth inning. These games are easily to slip away from you, know? And you Doesn't get right much. there. Nope. Again, here's the delivery. Breaking pitch. And it goes ball two and one. Mm-hmm. Schrader followed by Anderson. This point of the game, you need base runners. And yeah, you do. Lots of them. Trying to get back into this one. Still winnable game. Down five to two here. Get your, you get that again. The inning flipped all the way to the back, the top of the order. Then you get your thinking here. Fly ball, center fielder comes on, makes the grab off the bat of Luke Randall. That's the first out of this sixth inning. Schrader followed by Jace Anderson. See a couple of uh, guys down there warm up for Ethan Magnuson and also Drake Strode down there yep. throwing a few pitches down there. So either one we may see in this. Seventh inning with one down. Clay, breaking pitch there. Hey, this kid's uh, pretty impressive. You know, you take a look at his uh, body of work. You know, I thought, you know, it's like we we're going to get to him there for a little bit, but again, he challenged him with a lot of breaking pitches, you threw know. strikes. And, yep, and threw a lot of strikes, that, didn't he? That curveball is brutal. Mm-hmm. So no balls, two strikes. I guarantee he's going to see another one right yep. here. He's already thrown two times. Yeah, he's not going to give him a fastball. Nope. Schrader. 0-2 in the count to Bryson Swift for Pekin. And it hits to the right field area. And it's going to go into foul territory. And you take a look at, they have a couple of these kids. Again, Bryson Swift is a junior. Cade Edmiston is also a junior. And we mentioned about the uh, sophomore being Nathan Riggy. That's pretty much uh, really their primary pitchers for Pekin. Really a lot of underclass kids. And they got the steady, you know, the senior leadership out of Dickey, who's an all-conference player from a year ago. And they've still got a lot of games. They make up, they've still got a few games to make up. They've been rained out a few times. And another one of those teams, you know, they just haven't been able to get you know, a lot of uh, at-bats and those type of things. And Mother Nature makes it tough. Yep. Yeah. And stretches here. It remains no balls, two strikes to Schrader with one out in the sixth. Bobby mentioned they scored a pair of runs in the fourth, one in the fifth, two in the sixth. Single runs for Little Giants, third and the fifth. Base hit with one out. Off the bat of Clay Schrader. He is one for three in the day. Bottom part of the order now. Jace Anderson with one down runner at first. Haven't seen anybody for Pekin getting up. This particular stretch of the game now with a 5-2 advantage. And we'll see. I don't know if he may want to have a 
Courtesy runner there, Bobby. I think maybe a runner they may bring out of the dugout here. We'll wait to see. Coach Walters is over there. That's what it's going to do. Time called here. And I believe it's going to be... I think they're bring somebody down from the bullpen out there, but there yeah, we go. Eli Poston. And we'll see, number 11. Is that who it is? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Eli Poston. Poston will be the uh, runner at first base. So the runner at first now with one down, Eli Poston. Batter is Chase Anderson. Here in the sixth inning of the Middle Illini Conference contest. Need a few more base runners here. Still with one down. Trying to push the underclass Bryson Swift here. See where we can get him a little kind of he's pretty much you haven't really had a chance to rattle him today, Bobby. That's one of the things. He's been pretty unfazed, hadn't he? Yeah. Ball fouled straight overhead. Yesterday at about 3 o'clock, man, this place was covered. It looked like snow. I mean, that's how much of the hail was on the field here. I had just gotten home and in the house before nature <laughs> unleashed her fury. <laughs> it was nasty here in Canton. Pitch there right at the knees. Strike two is called. And Jace Anderson digs in for the right side. Posting the runner at first with one down. We're in the sixth. He can try to get to their first conference win as well as the little Giants here. Outside, just one and two. How's the pitch totals for Bryson Swift at this point there, Bobby? He has, let's see, 81. 81 at this time. Little yeah. check swing there. Ball two. 2-2. Two -two. Playing in the dirt there. On deck would be Devin Downs. Bottom part of the order for the Little Giants. Trying to turn it. That's where you want to get. You want to get maybe a run out of this and then get to the top of the order here. 2-2. Two -two. Fly ball to play. Second baseman goes out. And, oh, he dropped, dropped the ball. But they're going to get an out yeah, now you're stuck at in second no base. Land. That's a tough one. So, again, the fielder's choice. And then the air and then to get the out so the second out and when you're on base on a play like that you're in no man's, no man's land. land yeah not, not much not you can do about it Duke. so anderson at first to put out against post and that's the second out i thought it was kind of really a, a tough one for that second baseman where he had to to go to get the ball there i thought the better angle was the center fielder ball popped out of play here and Devin Downs, 0 for 2 in this afternoon. And they make the big play out there, get the second out of the inning, keep this game 5 to 2 peaking. Another opportunity off the stretch here is Swift. Curveball hits it to the right side. Second baseman gets to it, and the put out. 4 3. Well, Swift keeps the Little Giants in check, gives up the one hit, strand a base runner. And again, there was no runs. We played through six complete in this middle on eye conference game and peaking the advantage 5-2 to two as we head to the seventh inning. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton, Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spooner River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton, by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. Back here, middle part of the order, and we'll face uh, Ethan Magnuson, who will check in for this uh, Little Giant team. Ethan is a, a junior who comes in. And you talk about one beast on the football field. Man, no doubt. <laughs> he, I'll tell you what, he was one of the better tacklers, really good defensive player 
for the uh, Little Giants. Don't forget, he did a good job filling in for Jays. For yep. Yeah, he did. You know, learning that position. You may see him a little bit in that position as a kind of the tailback, fullback in that uh, wing formation. But tough kid, Ethan Magnuson, who comes in. And this kid has a pretty good upside. Saw him pitch a couple of times last year. And again, we'll see how he navigates into this uh, seventh inning here. It'll be Thurp, Sullivan, and Swift. And uh, peaking with the lead of 5-2, to two, they have scored three straight innings. <coughs> two in the fourth, one in the fifth, and two in the sixth. Chopper right at the third baseman. And a throw over there off the bat of Thurp, 5-3. On the put out one pitch, one down in the seventh. That's called being efficient. <laughs> Let's uh, finish the uh, numbers there in uh, Lucas catching there, Bob. And yeah. what did he finish out? Uh, six innings pitched, eight hits allowed, five runs, all earned, three walks and four strikeouts, 91 total pitches, 38 were balls, 53 were strikes. Well, that's their, again, run hits, errors, stats, and final pitching totals there brought to you by the Graham Health System. Check out the Graham Thrift Shop at 175 North Main in Canton. These are like the easiest stats that I do. This is awesome. <laughs> I told you, you, you put just kind of coast through. I could keep the scorebook. That's about me, it. You put me to work through everything else. 1-0. <laughs> oh. Ball flared out to left field, and it's going to get down. Oh, a base hit. Jammed him, and he get a base hit. Seeing eye yep. single. Ethan got the pitch in on him. That was off his fist. Yep. He got it out there for a base hit. Sullivan is uh, two for three with an RBI. He scored back in the sixth. Here is uh, Bryson Swift. Again, with one down, runner at first. Ethan, pitch on the corner strike is called. He's going to get a good live arm, and he's learning more about the accuracy and again of his breaking pitch, learning a little bit more of that changing speed. He's that kind of thing because he was all arm, you know, big strong arm. Hit out to center field. Drake patrols out there. A good job. Keeps it in front of him. A fly ball and an out. That's the second out of the seventh inning. Yeah, I think from what I've seen from Ethan so far, throwing's one thing, pitching's another. He'll get there. It just takes time. Yeah, he's you know, talking to Coach Mike Emery. He has a lot of uh, positive. Uh, he says this kid move. has some uh, tools. He has some movement on that ball mm -hmm. when he throws it. So a pitch there right at the knee. Strike call to Lavin, who digs in from the left side for Pekin. He's one for two, walked and scored back in the sixth. He can advantage five to two. Ball popped up a play. Right fielder in his tracks. Cummins and puts it away. So out in the inning is out number three. The single had the one hit, which was their ninth, and they have five runs as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Good job by Ethan Magnuson. Keep this game in check here. Five to two, and we head to the bottom of the seventh. Canton coming up here on WBYS. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton, by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions, call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. Both teams have committed a couple of errors. Uh, Little Giants have stranded seven in the afternoon. They've had five hits and only a couple of runs to show for it. Big day by Clint Wells. He's had a couple of RBIs. He's two for three. We'll see him up in the seventh inning here at the top of the order. Dalton Kremley, but again, the impressive performance by Bryson Swift. And again, the uh, junior chance to pick up their first conference win here. But Little Giants, top of the order here. Dalton Crumley leads it off. And is right on that pitch there. Dalton does a good job. He also works the pins. He works out the Lynn Lanes. 
part-time too. Great kid. And again, batting in here in the seventh inning. He's walked, scored twice for the Little Giants. Has the shortstop. Breaking pitch, one and one. Little Giant dugout showing some life. Trying to get Swift a little bit rattled. They were, again, he lived here at one time, so they know a lot of these uh, kids in the Canton dugout there. Here's the pitch up and in. It's two and one. What you need to do is make him work for it. Yeah, tried to overthrow that pitch. You see that that ball really exploded inside. Two and one. They got Riggy, good strong arm at third. Shortstop Tharp, Coriel at second. Johnson over at first defensively for Pekin. They lead five to two. Breaking pitch swing, strike two. Took a nice little, again, change the speed on that one. It's two, late, two. Late breaker. Yep. 2-2 in the seventh inning leadoff batter. Again, he'll bring the pitch here. Chop, third baseman. Glove there. Quick on the line. A throw over there. 5-3 on the putout. Waste no energy to get that ball across the diamond for Nathan Riggi. He had some steam coming off of it. Man. He just taps the glove and the ball. Look how high of the ground it was, Bob. He plays with a purpose. <laughs> it's a one down in the seventh inning. Here's Landon Cummins. One for two today, sacrificed and single. Top of the order for the Little Giants, trailing five to two with one down. Man, Out to become a uh, premium here now Hector. at bats. Yeah, he's looked pretty sharp here. That thing is still snapping yeah. off in this inning compared to what it was at the start of the game. No balls and a strike to the batter, Cummins. Bats on the right side. Hoo hoo. Took a nasty pitch there. Strike two. <laughs> Next practice for the Little Giants be hitting breaking pitches, yeah. I believe. They've seen a lot of them. So one down in the seventh with two strikes. The count to Cummins. Right-hander Bryson Swift works off the stretch here. And he's really worked off the stretch even with there's been nobody on. It's yeah. been his, really his comfort zone, hasn't he? He's kind of locked in here. We've only had a couple of base runners really since the fourth inning. And again, here in the seventh, with one out, breaking pitch, skied out the center. On his horse out there is uh, Brown, and he tracks it down in center field. So two down off the bat of Landon Cummins, tracked down there by Braden Brown. 92 pitches thrown for yeah. Bryson Swift. Pretty efficient here. He's had a couple of walks, right? A couple of walks. Two, in one the, strikeout. Yep. So we'll have all the totals for you coming up. On the post-game show, brought to you by Big Rack Steakhouse. You can check their quick lunch special at Salad Bar and their Sunday buffet at Big Rack Steakhouse in Canton. Two for three day with a couple of RBIs. Clint Wells digs in with two down in the seventh. Trying to keep this uh, team alive here. Get a foul ball. He was up there. He don't get cheated on his swings. No, not at all. I can tell the difference in seeing Clint a couple of years ago at the bat. A lot of confidence, very patient up there. Knows what the strike zone is. Yep. So That's two down the in the seventh. Yep. Big, strong kid. Here's the delivery. He smacks it. Center field. It carries over left center field area. And Clint with the ground rule double out there. Yep, no so a double. You know, it wasn't hit high enough to get the ball out of here, but you knew he had a chance for a double or a triple. It was hit hard, though. Yep. So two down and a double. Going to be the sixth hit by the Little Giants. <laughs> the morning show on WDYSS, your connection. The not a break. With Hello. Hey, we're not a break. Back here, I think it's a, I thought it was a they call ground rule double. They a ground rule double, but they were saying it wasn't underneath the fence. Yeah. So Clint went ahead and rounded and scored. And I don't blame him. I would have, no, too. No, no. Let, you know, let the umpire make the yeah, call. Yeah, yeah. So an extra base hit by Wells. He ends up uh, three for four in the day with a couple of RBIs. And it's uh, up to Drake Strode here to keep this uh, game alive with two down. One for three on the day is uh, Drake Strode. A hit back in the third. Again, a little Giants still trail five to two, down to their last out with a runner at second. Two out rally. And again, a little bit low that delivery. Good job of the catcher, Lavin. 
It's number 96. And it's come down to this where they have not really shown any kind of signs of putting anybody else in the game here. Nope. It's going to be up to the uh, young pitcher here. And again, Swift. That's a ball. 2-0. and oh. I think if Drake gets on, you might see some action. Yeah. Because it'll be the tying run at the plate. So Drake now with a run at second. Bats with two outs. 2-0 two -oh count. Took a little bit off of that pitch. Man, I tell you, that's a tough one here. When he's gotten that one into the strike zone, Breaking. that hangs a lot of movement in it. Curveball has been his savior. Mm -hmm. So 2-1. Off the stretch, he'll bring the 2-1 pitch. Skies it to right side. First baseman gives chase, and it goes to foul territory down there. A lot of the folks have been stationed out there. A lot of their chairs and things down there. And people don't understand, you know, I, I, I seen a couple of, I've seen a couple of foul balls when I'm at a game. You don't want to catch them. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that's not the that's not the smartest thing to try to do is catch them without a glove, especially. <laughs> so two balls and two strikes now. Two outs, runner at second. Little Giants trailing this one five to two. At bat is Drake Strode. Pitch off the end of the bat to the shortstop there. Glove wheels the throw across the diamond, and that's the way the Little Giants thwarted end of this game here. Comes to an end. Little Giants finished with six hits, two runs. They strand seven. I should say they strand eight now because he had one left on this game here. But again, it was peaking. Again, had scored the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Little Giants were only able to answer one single run at that point. And winning pitcher Bryston Swift. Loss goes to Lucas Ketchum. And the Little Giants now 6-5, and 0-3 oh and in the conference. And uh, Pekin now 2-4 and 1-1 and one and one to even the conference. Coming up next is the Big Rack Steakhouse postgame show. Bob and I will have that for you. All the totals in two minutes. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton. Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton, by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Call us for more information about underwriting. All right, you ready for some baseball trivia? Let's do it. What year produced the most no-hit games in the big leagues? Seven no-hitters in 1990. Wow, that's right. Now a question that's not trivial. How many children will witness bullying this year? Huh. Uh, the answer, three out of four. 75%? That's wow. right. How many of them will say something? Kids want to help, but don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Right at 6 o'clock, you're listening to, uh, again, the coverage of uh, high school baseball on WBYSCM 1560 and 93.7 FM and streamed online, 1560 WBYS.com. Stay with us. We'll be joining uh, the first uh, beginning of the Cardinal game at Washington, D.C. against the Nationals. Up next is the postgame show. It's brought to you by Big Rack Steakhouse on a North Main in Canton. Check out the quick lunch, soup, and also salad bar and the Sunday buffet at Big Rack Steakhouse, North Main in Canton. Canton. Little Giants now with the loss. They go to 0 and 3 in the conference, 6 and 5. Pekin gets their first win of the conference. They're 1 and 1. 
and two and four overall. A uh, tough game uh, when you look at it. The game was in the balance there. We had a one nothing lead. A big hit by Clint Wells early in the game in that third inning. Got on top. Peek and answer with a pair of runs, and then they scored single run in the fifth, two in the sixth. Uh, too much today. Bryson Swift. He just did a really terrific job, even with the good uh, at bats uh, from Clint Wells. Uh, again, uh, nice uh, job by the young man, uh, Bryson Swift, who picked up the win, and again, it did it rather efficiently. Only allowed again six hits, and again, uh, the Pekin had a couple of errors. Was able to kind of maneuver through a lot of that. But the winning pitcher today, Bryson Swift, the loss goes to Lucas Ketchum. Our runs, hits, errors stats are brought to you by the Graham Health System. Make sure you check out the Graham Thrift Store at 175 North Main Street in Canton. For Canton, two runs on six hits. Pekin commits a couple of errors, and Little Giants strand eight on the base path. And also, uh, the totals for Pekin, they had a total of five runs, nine hits, and Little Giants committed a couple of errors, and they would strand seven on the base pass. This gets to our pitching, and again, they're brought to you by the Graham Health System. Bobby, look at the pitching uh, final numbers there as well. well. As you said, Lucas Ketchum took the loss. He had six innings pitched, allowed eight hits, five runs, all earned. Three walks and four strikeouts. His pitch total was 91 pitches, 38 balls, and 53 strikes. Ethan Magnuson came in for one inning. He allowed one hit, no walks, strikeouts, or runs allowed. He had an eight-pitch inning with two balls and six strikes. You know, the real player for Beacon was Bryson Swift. Complete game, seven innings pitched, six hits allowed, two runs. One of those was earned. Two walks and one strikeout. Pitch tally, 99 pitches, 34 balls, and 65 strikes. Got a big hit that they tail end there, too, by Chase Paul. Again, had they had uh, one run had scored and in position to really get out of the inning, and he got the big hit down the left field line. They added an extra run, and they win it by a score of 5-2. to two. Up next is the Outstanding Player Performance. The game is brought to you by Advanced Rehab Sports Medicine. For free injury screen, call 649-1572. They fix sports injuries. Going into the game, Clint Wells is hitting at 483 clip, and he finishes with a 3-for-4 day, including a couple of RBIs in the game for the catcher. And again, Clint Wells else is our outstanding player performance of the game there, Bobby. And if you look at it this way, and if it wasn't for a diving play by their left fielder, yep. he had a 4 for 4 spot. That's how well that ball he's played today. Absolutely. That'll wrap things up again for Mark Bixler with the M. Bixler Video Productions. Uh, Megan, our engineer back at the studios. We'll see you Thursday for girls uh, taking on state-ranked uh, East Peoria. That'll be on the air with you at 4.15, 4.30 1st pitch. That'll be on Thursday. And uh, Bob will be back with us next week for coverage of uh, baseball. Looking forward to that as well. Always uh, great to see my friend and as always we get uh, rolling through the little bit of the baseball season. He's already been to one Chiefs game already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was uh, my first high school game. You know, it's just the weather. I mean, how can you beat a day like this compared to yesterday? You know, it didn't quite work out our way for the outcome. I enjoyed being here. I look forward to being back next week. Thanks for Mark and Mixer Video Production for Bob. I'm Leon and again a win this afternoon. Again, Pekin adds a couple of runs in the sixth inning and they prevail here today. Pekin 5-2 to two over the Canton Little Giants in baseball. That's your post-game show. It's brought to you by Big Rack Steakhouse. Check out the quick lunch soup and salad bar and the Sunday buffet at Big Rack Steakhouse in Canton. For everybody involved for Prairie Radio Communications, thanks for joining us here live from Bob M's Field. Up next, Cardinal Baseball next here in the 6 o'clock hour on the Voice of Fulton County.